During the middle decades of the 18th century, the Enlightenment flowered in Lichfield. At its centre was a small group of talented and educated individuals who sought answers to questions which shaped modern thought. Dr Erasmus Darwin was one of the leading figures during the time he lived in Lichfield. Born in 1731 in Nottinghamshire, Darwin moved to Lichfield in 1756, having qualified as a doctor in Edinburgh. In Lichfield, Erasmus Darwin set up a medical practice which enabled him to cater for wealthy individuals across the West Midlands region. He journeyed as far as Derbyshire, into Birmingham and beyond. He was extremely successful as a doctor and therefore he gradually built up his, um, uh, his medical practice and it went up quite steadily from about sort of 500 pounds a year to over a thousand. George III heard about him and said he wanted him to be his doctor and his wife, uh, she was not keen at all on going to London and being some sort of in the court or something and he, he wasn't very keen either so he didn't turn it down. In the more leisurely society of Lichfield, Darwin applied his formidable intellect to a wide range of questions. He considered the origins of life forms, forming ideas that would later influence the work of his grandson, Charles. Together with his friends from the Lunar Society, such as James Keir, Josiah Wedgwood and Richard Lovell Edgeworth, he performed experiments with electricity, heat, gas and air. Throughout this time, Darwin was also a prolific author on botany and literature. He captured the breadth and diversity of his thinking in his commonplace book, now displayed at the Erasmus Darwin House Museum. He, he thought that it would be a good idea to write down what he'd done for that day. That's, that's obviously what started it, so that he'd have it available if he wanted to look at it later. And um, then it gradually went on and he started putting in a lot of his inventions and things as well. So it's a mixture. It's a, it's a gold mine, if you like, of new ideas. Darwin was a poet. He was a biologist, he was interested in the weather, he was interested as well in natural life of all kinds. And we can see him as, as someone who was very much a Renaissance man in the 18th century, somebody who had an enormous range of interests. Darwin's influence and thinking reached beyond Lichfield. He became friends with the industrialist and entrepreneur Matthew Bolton, and the two men shared a fascination with experimentation and technological innovation. This meeting of minds was crucial in the establishment of the Lunar Society, which included some of the leading minds of the 18th century. He was always very good at making friends. He had an amazing capacity for, for friendship, I suppose you could say, uh, mainly, of course, with his Lunar Society people. He made many fantastic connections with other significant characters of the Midlands, such as Matthew Bolton, Josiah Wedgwood, Joseph Priestley. They would all meet around a table, have dinner, and just get into discussions of their, their life, their work, and their achievements. I think what happened was that um, everyone came along with some interesting new idea, probably. And, uh, and that they wanted to air to, and see what the other lunatics thought about it. Science, manufacturing and all the things they were interested in are the obvious, obvious things that they would have talked about. In Lichfield, Darwin formed another important friendship with the Reverend Thomas Seward and his family, including his daughter Anna. Vivacious and intelligent, Anna could recite Milton at the age of three. When Darwin moved to Lichfield, she was 14 years old and had poetic aspirations, much like Darwin himself. He helped Anna when she was young with her poetry because she liked writing poetry. Uh, he was deliberately nice to her to start with because she was only a child and I suppose it sort of fatherly attitude still stayed later on. She liked him. She liked him very much. She liked the man himself. She liked the warmth of him. The only thing she didn't like was his sarcasm, and he could be very sarcastic. They became friends and remained friends all his time here in Lichfield. 
Darwin encouraged Anna's literary ambitions and she became a well-known poet and author. Known as the Swan of Litchfield, Anna gained a significant literary reputation and she undoubtedly benefited from the literary friendship and advice of Erasmus Darwin. Darwin's own poetry explores his interest in botany and poetic works such as the Botanic Garden and the Temple of Nature. In these, Darwin explores theories of the origins of life and in another work, Zoonomia, he speculates on how life on Earth may have developed, themes that were taken up half a century later by his grandson, Charles. Most of it was uh, just medical theory. And then in the, the last chapter, chapter 39, he uh, did something completely different. It's called Of Generation, but it propounds the theory of evolution. He says life started in the form of a microscopic filament. Millions of ages ago, what do you think of it? Millions of ages means hundreds of millions of years ago, and that's exactly when, well, when the Cambrian explosion started in, in 500 million years ago. That was the first real announcement of evolution, if you like. Of course, he didn't prove it, but uh, Charles Darwin, when he, he read that, had the idea that it was possible. He began to start his own theory of evolution based on that beginning. Erasmus Darwin played a significant role in the Enlightenment, introducing fresh thinking about the world and its origins. His personality attracted people, and a network of dynamic individuals formed around him, creating and disseminating knowledge. Darwin's residence in Litchfield came to an end in the 1780s. His first wife, Mary, had died in 1770, and when Darwin married Elizabeth Pole in 1781, she wished to move to Derbyshire. Although he and Elizabeth had a happy marriage, he nonetheless missed the stimulation of his friends in Litchfield and Birmingham. Darwin wrote to Bolton, I am cut off from the milk of science which flows in such redundant stream from your learned lunations, which I can assure you is a very great regret to me. Erasmus Darwin died in 1802, leaving a legacy of innovative thought. It was this legacy on which Charles Darwin was to build, changing our view of man and his world forever.